Hello and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's Online Bits and Bytes lessons. Today we're continuing our Code Adventures unit in Blockly. We'll be learning how to make a list. So that means um, we'll actually create a, a set list, so a hard-coded list, and then show you guys how to do a little bit of dynamic coding. Um, so like I said, we'll be using Blockly for that. So let's go ahead and switch over to that interface. Um, I already have it pulled up on my screen. So you guys are going to go to developers.google.com backslash Blockly. So you can see the um, URL right there in my browser. And once you get here, the interface is um, a little different than Scratch or Snap. So we don't have to click in anywhere and say create. You just, um, once you're on the page, this is the only interface we'll be using. Um, instead of an image on the right, you guys can see what the code would look like in different languages, um, text-based languages instead of code blocks. But this is the space we'll be working in. Unfortunately, we can't make it much bigger. Um, so if you have to scroll from side to side to see your code, go ahead and use the slider down here in the window. But, so if you guys have starter code on your screen, which I think you do, go ahead and click the first block of it and drag it over to the trash can with the lid is up, release and we'll have a blank space. So like I said, we're gonna be making a list today, um, particularly a list about things you guys are thankful for in recognition of the Thanksgiving season. Um, so you guys will have examples on the screen for you of things we're thankful for, but you guys are welcome to um, change those to be whatever you want. Um, before we get started, you may need to turn off your pop-up blockers for this instead of um, if you've worked with scratch before when we go to create variables it has its own uh, program based pop-up window but because this is, lives in the browser and works in the browser it uses the browser pop-up so if you guys have pop-ups turned off or your parents do um, you may need to ask them to turn them back on to allow them while you do this activity and then you can turn them back on um, it, it's completely safe to turn them on for this all right so the first thing we're going to do is go create a variable. So go to the variables drawer and click create variable. And we're going to name this. This is going to be the name of our list. We're going to name it thankful. And once we've named it, we're going to um, initialize it or uh, create it and give it value and or set it and give it value. So use this set thankful to block and drag it into our workspace. Then go to the list drawer and get this create list with and attach it. You're going to attach it after the two of our set block. Um, once you've done that, head back, to, head to the text drawer and you're going to get three of these. It's a double quote with an empty space inside. So we're going to get three of those blocks. Um, and you guys are welcome to add more on later. But for now, we're just going to stick with three things. So you can see in JavaScript over here on my right, we, it has variable name thankful, which is what we did with this block. And then it's initialized thankful to be an array, which is a, another name for a list, but typically in JavaScript, it's referred to as an array. And right now you can see we have three empty um, spaces in there. So it knows it's gonna be text by having those quotes in there. It just doesn't have anything yet. Um, so now that we have those three blocks, I want you guys to go ahead and put three items that you're thankful for. So some examples might be my family, my friends, um, and then the activity worksheet has my health. Maybe you want to put in my pet, something like that. Um, so once you guys have done that, we'll move on. So the thing with lists is you cannot just print out with some languages, especially JavaScript, you can't just call the um, list name and have everything print out. So what we're going to do is look through each list item. And as we look through the list, print out that item. Um, and we're actually going to format this to be a complete sentence too. So the very first thing we'll need for this active to do the iterating or looking through the list is a loop. So you're gonna go to this loop drawer and get a for each item I in list and attach it under the set block that we used. Then go to the variable store and get our thankful block and attach it after the word list. So this tells it that we're going to iterate through the items in the thankful list. 
All right. Then go back to the variables list and we're going to get this change i by one block and put it inside the loop. So it goes inside our for loop. Now instead of i, we're actually going to change the variable count. And so this says each time we go through it, we're going to increase count by one. And count is going to keep track of how, which item we're on. Um, then we're going to go to text and start printing out our text. So first we're going to go to, we need a print. We're going to get this print ABC block. And then back in text, we're going to get this create text with. So this is how we're going to format our sentence. The first blank here, this first space, we're going to put in this empty um, text space again. So it's, and we're going to say, um, I'm thankful for, and then make sure you add a space after that for. So I know it doesn't seem important, but if you don't, then the next words to print out of our list are going to be right up next to that um, R. So go ahead and make sure you put a space after that for. <laughs> then head back to the list drawer, and we're going to get a in list block. So there's a few here. We want the one that says enlist get. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. All right, so we have enlist get, we want it to be the number, and then we're going to use the count variable. So under the variable store, go get the count block and place it in this empty space at the end. So that's what's gonna tell it to print out the specific variable. So this is one, two, three. Um, in most programming languages, this will be 0, 1, 2. Okay, so now if we run our program, maybe, oh, I forgot to change the list. Sorry, use that drop down and make sure it says thankful. That was my bad. All right, so now, this one says, I'm thankful for my family. You hit OK. I'm thankful for my friends. Hit OK once more. I'm thankful for my pet and hit OK. The program's done. Um, so like I said, it's over here in JavaScript. So here it created all of our variables, but didn't give them values yet. Down here, it initialized a variable, thankful with a list with our three values. Here's our for loop. So you can see it looks pretty similar to the blocks, right? So we're saying for variable i, this is our index variable. So this is the placement of each variable in the list. Um, we set i to be thankful index. So it's setting i to be the value of the current index. And we created count. And we're telling it to change count by one. And then it prints it all out. So see. I can't get that, that window, there it goes, that window is a little scroll. So you can see all of that. Um, and if we switch over to Python, which is a little bit less uh, syntax, so they put everything to none when they initialized it. Um, so Python, you have to give it a value when you create it. And then, you know, we have the list here that looks pretty similar. The loop looks pretty similar. It just has less, um, it doesn't have those curly brackets. So if you want to learn a language, Python is normally pretty good if you're um, new to typing because you don't have to worry about so much punctuation. There's still some, as you guys can see, but it's pretty good. Um, if you haven't come to a live session yet, there's two ways you can do so. So if you go to youthcodejam.org and go to Bits and Bytes under the Jam at Home tab, you're going to get this special pop-up page. And then you're going to click learn more and register. So we are now partnered with Palo Alto College um, and they are supporting a lot of the uh, running, the management for bits and bytes, which includes the registration. Um, so you guys are able to go to the site and register through them. Um, and then so or you can go to their site directly to register. 
And then if you're not able to make it to live sessions, our videos are still going to be available under a new tab called um, Coding Activities. And we've um, streamlined this page so it doesn't get confusing with the two different bits and bytes locations. So this is just saying, um, you can, this is another way you can register for the live lessons. And then here's the activities that we're working on. So the most recent one will be at the top and the older ones for the month will be at the bottom. So when November starts, it will only be November's activities available. But the activities are always available. If you go to our YouTube page, you just won't have access to the um, the activity sheets or PowerPoints anymore, um, but you can always follow along. We have videos going back through March, so there's plenty to do if you're home from school and bored or just wanna do something else or keep practicing your skills. So the earlier ones, there's a lot of Scratch if you're looking for something in Scratch to do. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for coming and I hope to see you at a live session soon.